From London, we present the story of a song with a difference. The Invader by Philip Levine. Oh God, I needed that. Forgive me, I must catch my breath. Oh, that's better. I've, I've just killed a man. Yes, you heard right, killed a man. I didn't want to do it, I had to. Tell me, have you ever been followed? Had someone living perpetually in your shadow? What if someone invaded your mind? Never a single thought your own. I, I'm not a violent man. I'm creative, sensitive. My name's Stanway, Edmund Stanway. Huh? Rings a bell, does it? Music, I write music. Reviews, films, quite a few songs, too. I love my work. Music's everything to me. Pays well, too. Or did, till about a month ago. I happened to switch on the radio. As I stood there listening, I couldn't believe my ears. That tune. I'd written it about a fortnight previous. The manuscript was still lying on my piano. I hadn't done the final arrangement. No one had seen it or heard it, not even my publisher. Yet it was the same, note for note. Well, I expect you recognize that tune, the new song by Paul Shelley, Spanish Starlight. Delightful, I think you'll all agree. And now, a selection from the new musical. Paul Shelley never heard of him. Well, it seemed we both hit on the same melody. Well, there was only one place for the manuscript. It didn't worry me unduly. I was already working on something else. A number for the San Remo Song Festival. If my publisher liked it, then he'd find a lyric writer. Yes, it was coming along fine. So I thought I'd drop by and play it over to him. Stanway, hello. Come on in. Oh, how are you, Mr. Henley? Oh, fine. Piano's all yours. I haven't done the final arrangement, it's just the theme. Okay, let's hear it. Hold it a second, would you? Don't you like it? Well, Stanway, to be honest, I've got something almost identical. It came in only this morning, on tape. I've got it here. Listen. Same, isn't it? Yes. Well, these things happen. I'm sorry, Stanway, but I've already agreed on terms, and the lyrics being written. Paul Shelley. Shelley? You know, Spanish starlight, a big hit. Well, not to worry, Stanway. After all, how many notes are there in a scale? Well, as Hanley said, how many notes are there in a scale? Just one of those odd coincidences. At least that's what I thought until... About a week ago, I completed a couple more pieces. So I dropped by to see Hanley again. He'd someone with him, so I had to wait. Suddenly, I heard the piano from Hanley's office. But the music was identical to the manuscript I had in my hand. As I followed it note by note, I, I thought I was going to pass out. Mr. Stan, why well, you're looking awfully pale. I have a bit of a headache, that's all. A nice tune, isn't it? Hmm? The one he's playing, Paul Shelley. Paul Shelley, did you say? Well, it's only his pen name. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Yes, Mr. Handy, I'll bring the contract in right away. Pardon me, Mr. Stanway. As Millie went into the office, I caught a brief glimpse of a man by the piano. He was tall and fair and couldn't have been more than 30. If Shelley was only a pen name, I wondered what his real name was. I was alone, so I looked through the file on Millie's desk. There was no other name on the card, just a telephone number. Quickly, I made a note of it, then I left the office. There was little point in seeing Hanley now. 
I spent the next few hours trying to find some explanation. Finally, I picked up the telephone and dialed the number I'd taken from Hanley's file. Suddenly, I panicked. There was no point in asking for Shelley. What could I say to him? I could hardly accuse him of stealing my music. I put down the phone, but a few minutes later, it rang. Hello? Mr. Stanway. Who is that? Don't you know? No, I'm sorry, I don't. Oh, I thought you were trying to reach me. Didn't you dial my number just now? Long Acre 5472. What? No. Oh, come along, Mr. Stanway. I know it was you. Very rude just to hang up, you know. But if you'd like to chat, I'm in the penthouse flat, Regal Court West, off Hoban. Do drop in, won't you, Mr. Stanway? But, hello? Hello? How could he know that I'd tried to ring him? Quickly, I took a taxi to Regal Court. It was a high block, and the lift carried me to the penthouse. But before I could press the bell, the door opened. Ah, Mr. Stanway. Come in, won't you? Thank you. Couldn't make up your mind, could you? I... I beg your pardon? Whether to come or not. But I'm quite sure you'd like a drink. Now, yours is a... No, no, don't tell me. Um, whiskey neat, right? Fine. Cigarettes are on the table behind you. No, 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 not that box. They're tipped. You prefer the other sort, don't you? Your drink? Thank you. Nice flat, don't you think? Very. I have a balcony, too, through here. And rather a splendid view, hmm? Yes. Uh, no, 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 don't go too near the rail. It's quite a drop. Why did you ask me here, Mr. Shelley? Now, before we go any further, the name's not Shelley. That's merely a pseudonym. My real name's Farrow. Paul Farrow. You still haven't answered my question, Mr. Farrow. Why did you ask me here? <laughs> well, I don't know, really. I suppose I should have left well alone, but uh, curiosity, I expect. I knew so much about you, I felt I'd like to meet you in the flesh. But how do you know so much about me? <laughs> that would be telling. I said, do you mind if we go back in? It's a bit nippy out here. I owe a lot to you, Mr. Stanway. This flat, among other things. Those royalties certainly mount up, don't they? Oh, I say, do help yourself to another drink. Your glass is on the piano. As I picked up my glass, I noticed a manuscript. The tune was identical to the one I'd been working on that morning. I was so shaken, I dropped my glass. <coughs> Farrow turned and smiled as though he knew the reason. I grabbed my coat and got out of the building as quickly as I could. Was it possible that Pharaoh could read my thoughts, steal them? For days, I couldn't work. I sat for hours just tinkering with the keys. Then late this afternoon, the phone rang. Hello? Well, we've been slacking, haven't we? Who's that? Over three days and you haven't put a note on paper. Really, Stanway, this won't do at all. What's the trouble? No inspiration? What do you want? Why have you rung me up? Well, it's time you started work or you'll be putting us out of business. Us? Ah, to coin a phrase. Now just pull yourself together. Get out of that dressing gown and have a shave. How do you know I'm in my dressing gown? Well, aren't you? <laughs> that sudden fear crept over me again. I was in a total panic. I had to get away. But then I realized there was no point in running. Somehow, Pharaoh had invaded my mind, observing and stealing my thoughts. My musical thoughts. If it went on, there'd be no future, nothing. I had to be rid of him. But how? If Pharaoh could read my mind, he'd guess what I was thinking. So if I thought of murder, he'd know, wouldn't he? Uh, somehow I had to create a barrier. Then it came to me. I'd fill my mind with music to act as a kind of screen, some complicated symphony to confuse any kind of transference. I concentrated hard and music poured into my mind. Yes, that was fine. 
complex, elaborate, confusing, the perfect barrier. Now I could think and think freely. My plan was very simple. No one knew that I'd met Pharaoh. I'd call on him, be perfectly friendly, and somehow maneuver him onto the balcony. Then a quick push over the low rail. Yes, so simple. Well, about half an hour ago, I arrived at Pharaoh's flat. But as he opened the door, he appeared surprised to see me. The barrier was working. Pharaoh, I'd like to talk to you. Come in, but you'll have to make it snappy. I'm going out. You won't mind if I just slip on a jacket and tie. Shan't keep you long. As Pharaoh went into the bedroom, I opened the door to the balcony. As I did so, the phone rang. Almost involuntarily, I grabbed at the receiver. Paul? Paul? Why are you there? Paul, can you hear me? Paul! Quietly, I put back the phone, but cunningly left it off the hook. I didn't want any further interruptions. Pharaoh returned a moment later. I say, was that the phone? No, I didn't hear anything. It's a glorious evening, isn't it? You're lucky to have this balcony. Yes, nice clear night, isn't it? Right, Stanway, what do you want? Just wondered how you do it, Pharaoh. Hmm? Steal my music. Telepathy, is it? <laughs> I wouldn't know. I suppose you just happen to be on the same wavelength. A freak of nature. It can't go on, Pharaoh. I'm telling you, it's got to stop. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do about it. No, but there's something I can. Ah! You see, as I said, it was so simple. But as I turned to leave, there was a ring on the doorbell. Quickly, I climbed the small metal ladder to the roof. There was a fire escape leading to a side street. I got back here about 15 minutes ago. As I said, I didn't want to kill him, but what could I do? He was stealing my thoughts, my music. <laughs> Who's that? Not the police, surely. Now, pull yourself together. There's nothing to link you with Pharaoh. It's all right, Mr. Stanway. It's not the police. What? Who are you? Oh, doesn't my voice sound familiar? You've heard it several times. I'm Shelley Farrow, Paul's sister. Sister? Well, didn't he tell you? We worked together under the name of Paul Shelley. He wrote the lyrics, I wrote the music. You? Yes. I'm the one with the telepathic gift, not Paul. I tried to warn him, but you took the phone off the hook, didn't you? You killed him. And how could you prove that? By telepathy? Hardly evidence. And there's nothing to link me with your brother, is there? That's true. But if you're thinking of murdering me, I shouldn't. I posted a letter to my bank in case anything unforeseen should happen. Besides, I'm not sure that I'd want them to hang you. You're such a talented person. So creative. And although I may never see you again, you'll repay me in time. How do you mean? With your thoughts, Mr. Stanway. Your musical thoughts. The Invader by Philip Levine with James Thomason. Produced by Michael Bakewell for the BBC.